So you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Govind, have you joined? Govind? Not yet. Okay, anyways. So uh, we are going to start. Uh, so I think in the last class I have discussed this thing, right? Uh, tensorial notations. Have you revised the vector algebra? So, in the last class, we discussed that we can represent uh, stresses in the form of tensors. Okay, uh, just like any other field theory, because uh, tensor is a easy notation and long expressions can be made very simple. So all those things we have discussed in the uh, previous lectures. So those who have joined recently, they can go and uh, 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 first of all, one suggestion that uh, those who are joining now, they should uh, write an email to me. Second they should uh, join the course on Moodle because all the information is available there and uh, you can also check the YouTube videos for uh, the lectures recorded so far okay so it will help you in re uh, revising and uh, and uh, understanding whatever is going in this course in the last class we discussed about uh, stress invariants right stress uh, excuse me sir yes sir voice is very low voice is very low still yes sir no sir it's working properly so maybe your uh, you should increase your audio Because it is clear for others, right? Yes, sir, it is clear. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, in the last class, we discussed about the stress invariants, right? We stopped there. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So now we are going to discuss further about that. Uh, can someone tell me in the last class, uh, what was the last thing that we discussed? So there were three stress variants. One, two, and the third one. How did we write uh, the first stress invariant? Lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three. Or in the sigma, in the, sigma, sigma I, I, yes, sir, sigma. Very good. And how did we write second stress invariant? Half of sigma I. Half of sigma I. Sigma I I Sigma K K Sigma K K minus Sigma I K minus Sigma I K Sigma I K. Sigma I K Excellent. And uh, third one, how did we write determinant of Sigma I Sigma I J Sigma I J Sigma I J Very good. So did you try this one at home? Yes, sir. What did you get? Uh, basically, sir, it is the determinant of uh, diagonal elements. That is okay, but what was the final expression that did you get? Uh, sir, it was sigma one one, sigma one one, sigma two two, plus sigma two two, sigma three three, plus sigma one one, sigma three three, minus, uh, sir, is sigma it two two? Is it the one? Yes, sir. No, sir, it's the with a minus me. Okay, it's the agave with minus me. Okay, but if we talk only about the principal stresses, then yes, only sir, then this is only this. If you share stresses, in that case will be zero. Yes, excellent. So if this is uh, shear stresses, then we can further expand it, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Okay, so I'm happy that uh, it means you have tried it, right? Yes. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, sigma i k into sigma i k is in matrix form, or sigma i i into sigma k k is in linear form. So, 
so this is the tensor notation right yes so if there is a repeated uh, subscript then you have to uh, use the summation symbol so when you write in the form of tensor uh, you don't think in the terms of matrix you simply think in the terms of the basic tensor algebra that i have discussed in the previous class okay so that is why i told you just you try this one okay because if i will keep explaining this one without you trying uh, uh, did you try this one yes sir so you are not getting the expression so maybe you can take help of your uh, who has tried this one rahul yes sir yes sir okay rahul so maybe you can explain to him how did you get this one okay okay sir okay okay thank you in case if rahul is not able to explain then uh, you can talk to me okay then i will explain it okay sir okay okay but see uh, my main intention is that first you should try okay and only then there is a point of discussion you should not expect that i will tell you the answers uh, because just you did not try and you uh, attempted because otherwise uh, you will not able to understand it am i clear yes sir okay. oh perfect thank you so now we are going little bit ahead in terms of principal stresses this one was sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 and this one was sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 3 sigma 1 and third one was sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 we are your sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 are principal now can someone tell what will be the value of sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square anyone hello vikram yes, yeah can you please tell me sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square in terms of is So one I, a square. Okay. Minus two into two a. That's it. Minus three a. No. Yes, sir. No. Correct, sir. This this one is good enough. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Yes. Now, I is stress invariant. what does it mean that if you change the principal if you change the axis or you take any kind of rectangular element your i is not going to change similarly this is also stress invariant it is not going to change so basically if this is not changing this is not changing then this expression will also not change so this also becomes another stress invariant am i clear yes sir okay similarly you can also show that sigma 1 cube plus sigma 2 cube plus sigma 3 cube this is also invariant this can be shown can someone try anyone so let me tell you there is one identity that you might have studied long 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 back 
a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 a b c how can you write this one a plus b plus c a plus b plus c a bracket do so bracket a square plus b square plus c square plus a b c plus b c minus a b minus a b minus b c minus c a perfect so again if you put in the terms of if you put a equal to sigma 1 b equal to sigma 2 c equal to sigma 3 so this becomes i a this becomes another stress invariant which we just discussed let us say s2 <coughs> and this one is minus times 2a and this this part is 3 times 3a three three three. okay so what you can conclude from this What you can conclude from this that a cube plus b cube plus c cube is also invariant. We can write it like S3. So now we have three types of invariants. First is S1, which is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Second is S2, sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square. Third is S3, sigma 1 cube plus sigma 2 cube plus sigma 3 cube. These are three stress invariants, which are also known as natural stress invariants. And this kind of formulation is only true for if you have sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 as principal stresses. So this is a very special case for a special case only principal stresses. So now can someone tell me how S2 can be written in the form of uh, tensor? Sigma IK, Sigma KI, try yourself. Prove this one. Okay, this is for you. Now we are going to discuss three special cases. The first one is there are three principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, right? There can be three possibilities. First possibility is sigma 1 not equal to sigma 2, not equal to sigma 3. Another possibility is sigma 1 equal to sigma 2, but not equal to sigma 3. And another possibility is sigma 1 equal to sigma 2, equal to sigma 3. Can there be any other possibility? No, sir. Okay. These are three possible cases which can happen. If this is the case, what does this imply? So each sigma is known as eigen eigen what? Value. Eigen. And each eigenvalue corresponds to each eigenvector. 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 Perfect. So there are three eigenvectors n1, n2, n3. All of them are 
यूनिक यूनिक मीन्स देर इज ओनली वन पॉसिबल सोल्यूशन एंड दे आर म्यूचुअली ऑर्थोगोनल वट डज दिस मीन दिस मीन्स दे विल ऑलवेज बी लाइक दिस एंड वन एंड टू एंड थ्री इफ दिस इज द केस इट मीन्स टू आइगन वैल्यूज आर सेम इट मीन्स टू आइगन वैक्टर्स आर yes i am waiting two eigen values are same two eigen vector also same are you sure but one condition is always true that eigen vectors are always mutually orthogonal so basically it means these are not same but only one eigen vector is unique so for example this is unique now in a plane perpendicular to this axis any two vectors which are orthogonal to each other they will be a solution to this one in this case any two vectors so this can be this one also this is also a solution this is also a solution this is also a solution it means only m3 is unique here there was only one solution one unique solution but here there can be infinity many solutions with n3 being unique now there is the, this third case now can someone tell what is this case no unique solution no solution possible no 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 solution possible or infinitely many solution possible infinitely many infinitely <laughs> unique solution is just not so what is this kind of stress state Sigma one equal to sigma two equal to sigma three. Hydro hydrostatic. Very very good. All three are same. It means eigen values overlap, and then there can be infinitely many eigen vectors. It means. does not matter what if you take three orthogonal vectors all of them are going to be the principal axis any three this is hydrostatic state of stress so in case of hydrostatic state of stress every direction is a principal direction every direction this is also known as isotropic situation okay so these were very special cases and we will talk about them more and now we are going to discuss i will keep all this 
a few examples. For example, let us talk about this example. Pop -pop -pum. Read this one very carefully. At a point P in a body, there is a body. In that body, there is a point P. And at that particular point P, we have taken one rectangular element. On that rectangular element, the state of stress has been defined like this. So my first question, is it principal, uh, are these principal stresses? No, sir. Why? Why? Because tau x, tau z, and tau z x are there. Oh, very good, very good. So these are not the principal stresses, right? Now, determine the normal and shearing stresses on a plane that is equally inclined to all the three axes. Determine the normal and shear stresses on a plane that is equally inclined to all the three axes. What are three axes? X, Y, and Z, right? Now, how to solve this one? Please. Yes. What is the methodology to solve this one? Kya karenge sabse pehle? What is your step one? Megram? Megram? Yes, sir. Bataye. What is step one? Kaise sumu karenge? Problem samajh mein aaya? Yes, sir. Problem kya bataye? Please explain the problem. Normal stress determine करने हैं। हाँ, normal stress कहाँ पर? On which plane? That is the reason I have removed the question phase because I was I wanted to know whether you have you heard the question, uh, have you listened the question carefully or not? So that was the reason. Rahul? Yes, sir. Please tell me. I'm not able to hear. Yes, sir. Sir, we can use here uh, Cochise test formula. Okay, okay. We can use the Cochise test formula. From there, sir, we can find resultant stresses as you said in the previous lecture stress formula so how to start so how we will use this for stress formula uh, sir there uh, are uh, uh, basically sir the aim of uh, we have to find the normal stressing okay so, normal stress like sigma is equal to sir so and into no, don't tell me directly the formulas, okay? Directly the equations. Tell me steps. The basic methodology. Okay, sabse pehle hi bataiye, what is the stress tensor at point P? Ye to sabse pehle question to samaj le, hai kya? Sigma IJ at point P. Shiva. Sir. Tell me, sigma ij uh, A matrix, sir, sigma xx. Oh, ah, so tell me the value of sigma xx. Don't tell me sigma xx. Uh, thousand, sir, thousand I didn't note the value, sir. Oh, so okay. one is a thousand, sir. Uh, 13,000, 10,000, so sigma x. 10, so maybe in MPA, I can write down for all of you. So that's why if I'm telling you any question, Yes, sir. You should be ready with your pen and paper. You should note down, okay? 
okay don't so sleep in my class okay mm-hmm. 100 100 100 so this i am going to write for you 100 minus 5000 100 and 100 and minus 50 minus 50 <coughs> okay now this is sigma ij current state now what is plane of interest on which we want to compute <coughs> normal and shear stresses tell me what is that plane of interest whenever i am saying plane it means what i am saying normal plane to normal normal direction cosines correct so what is the direction cosine of the plane of interest the information given was that plane is equally inclined so 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 very good so how can you explain 1 by root 3 so n x square plus n x y square plus n z square is equal to 1 or tino equal to 3 n x ki value aage 1 by root 3 okay so all of them are equal so iska answer kya hoga 1 by root 3 or plus minus 1 by root 3 root yes sir right Yes. But we can work with one by root three. Okay, for simplicity. Now we have plane of interest. We have current state. Now what? Tell me, Shashank. Yes, sir. Hmm. We have current state of stress, which is sigma i j. We have information about n j. Now what? Shashank, yes, sir. sir. I'm not able to understand it completely. Okay. Did you attend the last class? Yes, sir. Did you revise the notes? Yes, sir. That is that. What to? Okay. Tell me what is the Cauchy's formula? Yes, sir. What is Cauchy's formula? So sigma n equals to n x square into sigma x plus n y square into sigma y plus n z square into sigma z plus two n x n y sir tau x y plus two n y n z tau y z plus two n x n z tau z x. Okay, so now I understood. Now I understood why you are not able to understand. you are not able to understand because still you are not able to uh, accept the fact that when i talk about cauchy's formula i am not asking this thing i am asking the basic philosophy behind it so it is basically uh, what was the basic philosophy that i wrote at the end i am not talking about the mathematics right now what was the basic philosophy can you remind so that that is the reason you are <laughs> still thinking that by uh, taking that formula you will be able to uh, understand so resultant stress on a plane of interest equal to rectangular compass sigma i j to n j rectangular 
स्टेट ऑफ करंट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई प्लेन ऑफ डायरेक्शन इंटरेस्ट डायरेक्शन डायरेक्शन को साइन ऑफ प्लेन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट प्लेन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट दिस इज समथिंग विच इज वेरी सिंपल फिलोसफी इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस देन एवरीथिंग इज इजी फॉर यू डोंट नीड टू रिमेंबर ऑल दो इक्वेशन एंड एवरीथिंग नो शशांत नाउ यू टेल मी how to compute this let resultant stress on plane of interest is given by t and now it will have three components t and x t and y T and Z. Current state of stress is basically nothing but sigma i j. Direction cosine of plane of interest is nothing but n j or n i whatever. So this is basically n x, n y, n z. So now, can someone tell me this one? Yes, sir. Who is talking? Name, tell me. Sir Rahul. राहुल राहुल तुम ही जवाब देते रहोगे यार बाकी लोग से फिर कैसे इंट्रक्शन होगा <laughs> एक मिनट रुको मैंने लिस्ट निकाली हर्ष बताइए टीजे एक हेलो हर्ष हर्ष बताइए टीएनएस सर मतलब वो फॉर्मूला बताना सर या आप मैट्रिक्स फॉर्म में बताना है हां बताइए बताइए मैट्रिक्स फॉर्म में बताइए तो मैट्रिक्स फॉर्म में सर सिग्मा आई जे लिखेंगे हम हंड्रेड हाँ हंड्रेड 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 यही था ओके यस सर फिर हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टी हंड्रेड हाँ फिर हंड्रेड हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टी हंड्रेड हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टी ओके उसके बाद फिर उसके बाद कोशाइन लिखेंगे कॉलम में वन बाय रूट थ्री वन बाय रूट थ्री वन बाय रूट थ्री ओके okay, उसके बाद इसको सर पहली रो को मतलब हम क्रॉस पैक कर मतलब मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे और क्या आएगा वेरी गुड आता तो है तुम बताते क्यों नहीं हो बोलना करो सर मैं बोलता तो अच्छा नाउ टेल मी व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ सभी लोग कैलकुलेट करके बताइए कैलकुलेटर निकालिए हंड्रेड रूट थ्री This one is hundred root three. Hundred root three units MPA. MPA. ये वाला fifty root three. Okay. Now wait, Shashank. What is T and Z? शशांक यस सर हाँ शशांक व्हाट इज टी एंड जेड सर फिफ्टी रूट थ्री पूछ रहा हूँ बता रहा हूँ कॉन्फिडेंट कॉन्फिडेंटली बताओ ना सर फिफ्टी रूट थ्री ठीक है सही है फिफ्टी रूट थ्री है ओके सो ये क्या आ गए दीज आर कंपोनेंट ऑफ कंपोनेंट ऑफ शशांक नॉर्मल स्ट्रेसेस नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस के कंपोनेंट हैं आर यू श्योर टी एन एक्स टी एन वाई टी एन जेड दीज आर कंपोनेंट ऑफ resultant stresses ah no resultant stress given by t and on 
सुभाष सर पॉइंट बी ऑन ऑन पॉइंट बी कंपोनेंट ऑफ रिजल्टेंट स्ट्रेस ऑन पॉइंट पी ऑन मेघराम मेघराम गोविंद यस सर गोविंद तुम हो ना यस सर यस सर यस सर हाँ नोट करते रहना मैं जिससे आंसर पूछ रहा हूँ तो वो बोल रहे हैं कि नहीं बोल रहे हैं नोट करते रहिएगा ठीक है ओके मेघराम इंटरेस्टेड प्लेन हाँ इंटरेस्टेड प्लेन नहीं प्लेन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ओके ओके वेरी गुड सो नाउ वी हैव कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ रिजल्टेंट स्ट्रेस ऑन द प्लेन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट now what we want to calculate nitin yes sir now uh, what was our target sir normal stresses and shear stresses where they are equally inclined normal stress and shear stress on the plane of interest yes sir okay and what we have we have tl on plane of interest so from here we have to reach here so now how we can reach so we know the resultant stress on plane of interest now we have to take its two components one component along the normal of the plane and second component along the along the so one component is along the normal to the plane and along the tangent to the plane right so how we can compute sigma n the component along the normal to the plane रोहित सर डॉट रोहित कुमार वर्मा ओके सर यस सर हाँ प्लीज सिग्मा एन हाउ वी कैन कंप्लीट सिग्मा एन टी एन द कंपोनेंट ऑफ टी एन ऑन नॉर्मल टू द प्लेन what is this sir this is normal to the set resistance traces with direction cosines basically it's component of the resultant stress along the normal to the plane so this is normal to the plane yes sir and we are taking component of the resultant stress along the normal of the normal of the plane so how we can write this one so this is basically nx ny nz right and this is tnx tny tnz now how we can write sigma नेक्स्ट 
Very good. So now please compute this one and tell me what is sigma m. So 200 megapascal. 200 mega 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 mpa. 200 mpa. Very good. Now can someone tell me what is tau n? सेम एंगल बना रहा है दोनों एक्सिस से इसलिए नो नो कुछ भी मत बोलो Yeah. So magnitude of resultant stress is equal to root of normal stress. Yes, yes. Who is this? Who is this? So Shivanj. Shivanj, very good. Now you tell me. Now you are talking very good thing. So magnitude of the resultant stress is how much? So T n x square plus T n y square. Very good. One T n z square. Okay, how much is this? How much is this? Calculate करिए और बताइए। शशांक, वर्मा। बताइए यस सर हेलो हेलो हाँ सौगंध राज बताइए आई एम नॉट एबल टू हियर सर यस हेलो ओके कैन समन टेल मी सर एन टी एन इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड इज इट दिस और नॉट यस यस सर सर रूट थ्री रूट थ्री सर रूट थ्री और रूट टू यस सर करेक्ट सर दिस इज दिस इज करेक्ट राइट यस सर एक्सेक्ट आंसर इज टू वन टू पॉइंट वन थ्री टू आई एम नॉट इंटरेस्टेड दिस इज ओके ओके इफ यू यू कैन टेल मी दिस वन दिस इज हंड्रेड आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड फॉर मी ओके नाउ we can also write the resultant in the terms of normal and shear stresses how these are three components along the x y z now normal and shear stresses are components along the normal and tangential direction but vector is same so its magnitude will remain the same so we can write like this do you agree so sorry please repeat the concept c suppose this is one plane okay and on this plane this say resultant tn is acting am i am i correct uh, correct Yes. Now sir. this is normal to the plane. This is tangential to the plane. You are taking two component. One component is along this. One component is along this. Let us say. This component you are defining as sigma n. This component you are defining as tau n. So what is the magnitude of T n? Sir, sigma n square plus tau n square. Just a moment. Let me 
directed. Ah, uh, tell me. Sigma n square plus tau n square. Okay, this is clear. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, another way is that now we are going into x, y, z coordinate system. So this is the same T n. This is same T n in the x, y, z coordinate. This is same vector. But this time the coordinate system is x, y, z, not on this plane. So the components are. Let's say this one. I cannot show this in 3D. So let this is T and X. This is T and sorry T and Y, and this is T and Z. Now how can you write? This one, the magnitude of Tn in x, y, z coordinate. Tn. Tx. Tx square. Tn x square plus. And Ty square. Tn y square plus. And Tz square. T Tz square. But the vector is same. So it means magnitude will remain same. So that's why these two are equal. equal. Now okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So now you can tell me what is the value of tau one? Fifty root two, sir. Fifty root two. Who told this? Sorov. Who told this? Sorov. Sorov. Yes, sir. Sorov. Okay, sorov. Okay, fifty root two. That's how you can get. Everyone is getting the same. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So this was very simple problem, and we learned step by step how to calculate the stresses on any arbitrary plane if state of state of stress is known on any rectangular element. So this is something that we solved. we understood in this particular problem which is very straight forward it uses the concept of cauchy's uh, stress transformation the concept of equality of the vector into different types of coordinate systems and some basic calculations now here is your second assignment assignment 2.2 which is of 30 marks kindly listen this very carefully or you note down okay you have to write a matlab code for computing normal and shear stresses at a plane of interest for a given state of stress at a point in a solid and then validate your code with example 2.1 which we have just now solved that's what you have to do in this assignment is it clear any questions about the assignment no sir okay so you have to install matlab in your laptops and you have to start writing the matlab code if you do not know matlab coding beforehand no problem check some simple youtube video or find some uh, tutorials on the internet spend your time in learning the matlab code and writing the simple script and you have to submit this assignment i will uh, tell you the deadline maybe by email and uh, you have to submit the assignment on the moodle and after that this assignment will be graded via viva so you have to appear for the viva because currently everything is in online so till the offline classes start the viva will happen through online mode and that viva will happen uh, and the tas will inform you regarding the viva okay 
so if you do not appear for the viva there will be no marks for the assignment because you have to appear for the viva and that's how your marks will be decided there are no marks for writing the matlab code until unless you explain how did you code what calculations you did in the viva okay so please note down and uh, maybe i can give you time of uh, one week from now okay uh, govind take note of that okay so govind you can create an assignment in the moodle uh, yes, sir. okay with one week from now uh, create a link yes sir we will do that on moodle and uh, okay and there you can write the problem statement also yes sir yes. if you have any confusion you can talk to me okay perfect now now we are going to discuss second problem example 2.2 a more realistic problem which you might have seen in real life somewhere and when you completed your first assignment uh, some of you might have noticed these kind of cantilever beams so now uh, this real life situation we are going to understand here a tapered cantilever beam is loaded by a concentrated force so this concentrated force is applied at the tip at the point f at the end relate the normal stress listen very carefully relate the normal stress on a section perpendicular to the top edge of the beam at point a so point a is this so if you put the perpendicular on the top edge it will be something like that i am not able to draw properly because it is very difficult to draw so this is something perpendicular sorry my drawing is so drawing is so bad i am sorry for that sorry let me first we have to understand the problem clearly only then we can solve it so i mean this okay on this particular plane that i have drawn the bad plane okay let me call it as plane number 2 this as plane number 1 relate the normal stress on a section perpendicular to the top edge of the beam at point a to the flexural stress so if we are applying load here on the tip of the cantilever there will be flexural stresses right this beam will bend like this right top side there will be what kind of stresses tension 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 tensile stresses and below the this is what neutral this flex is excellent and this is compressive compressive very good okay compressive stresses so these are flexural flexural stresses now we know this and we have to relate the flex flexural stresses that is sigma 1 with normal stress on plane 2 we we want to understand what is the normal stress on plane 2 and this diagram shows what can someone tell what is this diagram stress at a point at state of stress where at point a at point a okay and uh, what about these planes which plane, plane is this one. plane 1 plane 1 exactly this is plane 1 plane 1 so we have taken a very small element at plane 1 right and we have drawn this uh, uh, rectangular element and this kind of stresses will be there right now what about plane 
So plane 2, if we draw, it will look something like this. Am I correct? Something inclined? Yes, sir. How we can represent the, so let us say, sigma 2 and tau 2 are the stresses on plane 2. How we can represent? Sigma 2 and sigma 2 is what? The normal and tangential stress on very good. Two. Very good. So say sigma 2, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And what about what about tau 1? Tau, sir, two. Uh, tau 2. Tau 1 uh, will Sorry, tau, 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 tau 2. Any comments for tau 2? I am taking one element which is very close to the top. Sir, it is, very it is 0. It is 0. Why? Because it is the top as of the You are right. Why? It is because it is at the top edge of the section. Which is which is a free it surface. Free and at free surface there will be no yes. excellent. Now why tau one is not equal to zero? Because tau one is also very close to the surface, then why not tau one equal to zero? See, on the plane 1, I have taken an element very close to the surface. But why tau 1 is not equal to 0? But why tau 2 equal to 0? Sir, because tau 2 is not parallel to the uh, x. Uh... Tau 2 or tau 1? Tau two is, tau one is not tau one is not parallel. Tau one is not parallel. So basically, what you will see, if you enlarge this one, okay. If you enlarge something here, so this will be the case of tau one. So there will always be like this. It does not matter how small is this element. If you enlarge this one. This is free surface and this is the element that you have taken. So there will always be some material in between. So this surface is never going to be free. This point may be free, uh, may be attached to the free surface, but there will always be some material, right? So there is no free. So in, if the material is there, stresses are going to be there and therefore the shear stress will never be zero or plane 1 but but when you are talking about the plane 2 right plane 2 your element near the edge is something like that so edge is going like this which is completely overlapping with the free surface that's why here tau is 0 and here along the plane 1 situation is like that so there is always some material and tau cannot be zero. Okay. Now calculate the normal stress on plane 2. First of all, it is the same problem as the previous example. Is it okay? Is, am I clear? Is the class of problem same? Megram? Yes, sir. Is the class of problem same? Is it the same problem as the previous uh, problem? Example 2.1? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Is it same problem or not? Megram, yes or no?
อนุรักษ์ Yes sir Is it the same problem as the previous one Were you able to understand the previous problem Yes sir So not totally same but some points are same philosophically yes philosophically is it same or not so almost same what do you mean by almost is it exactly same or not exactly not okay who says it is exactly same so not same sir because here Uh, shear stress is zero. It means it, <laughs> it means uh, you are still uh, not able to appreciate the philosophy. You are still lost in the calculation part. If someone is saying it is exactly same, uh, can someone tell is it exactly same or not? Yes, sir. sir. In this, we are comparing two points. Who? Uh, yeah, first, tell me your name. Who is speaking? Sir Shivansh. Shivansh, yes, Shivansh, please. Sir, in this we are uh, considering two points and we are relating their stresses with each other. But, 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 yes. In, in previous, in previous question, we were just uh, means uh, finding for a single point. Okay, exactly. Okay, no problem. Okay. Ultimately, in the previous problem. you were given what you were given one rectangular stress condition rectangular element uh, were given right why right yes sir and you were given what else the information to calculate direction cosine correct yes sir and what was the target so no that is no 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 there was another plane which is governed by this direction cosine on which you want stresses am i right yes sir was this philosophy true in the previous example this was the philosophy of previous example yes sir okay in this in this example also there is a same philosophy there is a rectangular element which is known and we are interested in computing the normal stress which is a kind of you can say stresses on the plane of interest which in this case is perpendicular to the top edge so in some sense this problem is exactly the same problem as we discussed in the example 2.1 the only thing is the setting is changed the rectangular elements are changed the direction cosines are changed and we want to know the normal stresses otherwise philosophy is the same so if philosophy is same it means the problem is same problem has changed okay if the philosophy is changed so again i ask everyone what is the first step how did we start the previous problem sigma is a matrix sir sigma is a at point a at, uh, very good just a moment okay. let me create some blank sheets in slide okay uh, in the meantime you please start solving this problem and when i ask please explain okay let me create some blank slide so that i can write okay okay perfect so here now how do we start yes okay let me hint let us define the top edge as the x axis so this was the top edge in the problem 
we have defined that as a x axis so this time our x is something like this so y will be something along perpendicular to this one let us say this is y that's how we have defined okay now let's say this is point a yes so if this is point a this is what this plane this plane is what which plane plane one one one, one. one. very good plane one very good and plane two will be y axis excellent plane 2 will be y axis so now you are able to understand okay which is perpendicular to this one and this is perpendicular to this one now this we know the information about plane 1 let us say this is direction cosine of plane 1 defined by n1 so what how can you define the direction cosine of n1 tell me yes come on let's say this angle is theta now tell me sir nx equal to cos theta cos theta excellent let's say cos theta i cap okay and and ny equal to cos alpha or 90 minus theta sin theta j cap yes and complete problem 0k yes is that okay not sure about z why uh sir cos 90 zero. okay sir yes sir sure sir i am writing zero it means z is not present right i am assuming that around the z axis there is full symmetry and we are solving the problem in only x y plane Is that okay? We are solving the problem only in XY plane. Can someone tell what is this is known as? You have studied in RCC design or something like that. Plane and stress problem. Plane and stress problem. But for completeness, we can write like that. Okay. Now, sigma x is what? Sigma 2. Is it clear or not? Sigma x equal to sigma 2. It is the same thing. normal to the normal to what plane two now can you write sigma ij so for plane two for plane 2 yes sigma, sigma 2, two, two zero. 0 0 sigma 2 0 0 0, zero, zero sigma 2 sigma 2 sorry but, zero. Okay. is it there sig sorry
tell me why this one is zero this is zero okay understood because we are dealing with the plane stress problem but why this is zero uh, uh, because there is no phase stress at the top you are very close so top top surface is a free surface free surface okay who told this answer subhas subhas very good subhas so this is for plane 2 the situation of sigma ij now we have this sigma 2 not tell me so this is or we want to relate so let us say no rectangular relate what we can write here cos theta sin cos theta, theta, theta sin theta, theta zero. 0 why direction cosine of direction uh, cosine. interested plane this is no this is uh, uh, this this one is uh, corresponding to plane 2 this plane one this, this direction cosine correspond to plane 1 and then we will get the resultant along the plane one one is it sashank harsh harsh yes sir okay so now tell me what to write here where sir sashank sashank aap bataiye sir sigma 2 cos theta nahi nahi isko batao pehle mujhe plane mat karna ko sankhya hai yes sir Tell me what is what is this uh, vector? So, so in plane one, I am asking about this one, this one, this one, this one. So cos, cos theta, theta sine theta zero. Ha. Cos theta sine sin theta, theta and zero. And zero. Now what will come here? So, so sigma two cos theta. Okay. First I am writing like this. defining on yes, one the three components now you tell me what is t and one so, so first one will be sigma 2 cos theta sigma 2 cos theta okay dusra wala and so then 0 0 0 and 0 sorry the so zero okay and one more ji okay sigma 2 cos theta right yes sir so resultant kya aa gaya ye correct now this is resultant on which plane plane 1 plane 1 answer resultant on plane 1 okay now normal stress on plane 1 is sigma 2 cos square theta sigma 2 cos square theta cos square theta how did you get this dot plane? product dot product sir dot product of what tx into uh, sigma 2 cos ta into n yes yes Tell me, is this? Yes, sir. By cap plus T T Z by J cap K cap K J J dot cos theta I cap x cap n x x cap n y cap and J cap K K cap and J cap. Okay. So this comes sigma two cos square theta. This is normal stress on plane one one. and we already know from flexural stresses 
that what is normal stress on plane one given by just in the previous slide i have shown here have i not shown let's say sigma one okay uh, did i make some mistake let's say sigma x am i correct or i am doing something wrong normal stress on plane one uh, maybe what i have done just to avoid any confusion let me mention sigma one that is flexural stresses how we can write flexural stresses in terms of the knowledge that you already have in the terms of movement and all can someone tell what is the flexural stress sogan sogan m by z m by z m by z very good very good m by z right so now we can write that sigma 2 equal to flexural stress divide by cos square theta cos square theta wonderful sigma 2 equal to flexural stress divide by cos square theta now what is this theta sir angle between free surface and plane one free surface and the plane one this was theta right that's what we have taken right yes now can someone calculate the shear stress on plane one shear stress on plane 1 because on plane 1 shear stress was not zero right on plane 1 shear stress was not zero right so let me show the diagram again So sigma two sine theta cos theta. This is plane two, right? And uh, sorry, this is plane one, right? So what is the shear sigma stress on plane one? Ah, tell me, tell me. Someone was sine theta cos sigma two. Sigma two sine theta cos theta. How did you get this? Sir, this is <laughs> please. So we have the resultant stress and the sigma. Sigma one, so we know the equation sigma one square plus or resultant square equal to sigma one square plus tau, I mean tau square. Okay, so tell me, uh, so oh, what is this? Mm hmm. So uh, you have to tell me. Yes. Uh, just a moment. Huh? Let me put. Okay. So what is the resultant stress? Sigma two cos. Sigma two. Mm, sigma two. cos theta ka whole square ah. okay and what is normal stress sigma 2 cos square theta ka whole square sigma 2 cos square theta complete whole square complete whole square the difference and under does square. everyone agree to this one Okay. Yes. This one difference. Uh, difference of what? Both t and t n square minus sigma n square. Okay. So this is what? Sigma two sine square theta cos square theta. Sine square can't say again. So I can say sigma two sigma two square cos square theta. Ah. Huh? Minus sigma two. Ah. Huh? Square cos four theta. ओके okay, अब आगे बताओ टेकिंग कॉमन सिग्मा टू स्क्वायर कॉस स्क्वायर थीटा 
and bracket is one minus cos square theta lattice sine square theta. Okay, so this is sigma two square theta, cos square theta, sine square theta. Sine square theta. Perfect. So you have reached to your answer. What you have claimed here. Yes. But one is more correction. You should put a more sign okay. because here you are talking about the magnitude, right? Okay, sir. Okay, very good. So this problem was again the same problem that was example two point one. Okay, there was no philosophically there is no difference. It's the same thing altogether. Now we come to next problem. Oh, it's already eight thirty. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so maybe we can discuss this thing in the next class. Okay. 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 So in the next class, we will discuss this uh, how we can obtain the principal stresses from a given state of stress. Okay. So uh, so next class will be when Wednesday. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Wednesday Wednesday we will meet again at the same time. That is seven to eight. Okay. And uh, maybe you can start working on your MATLAB assignment uh, so that you don't end up in uh, so much stress at the last moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, good night. Bye bye. Good night, sir. Bye bye. Bye. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.